Welcome to another Arcade One new update video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add Steam games into Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher on your Arcade One PC. This also works for other home arcades, such as Retrocade, Rec Room Masters, and some of the other ones that also utilize Hyperspin, so you can use it there. Some of the instructions might be a little bit different, but you'll get the gist of it. And this works for existing games and for future games that are coming out. Steam runs a lot of sales throughout the year, especially around the holidays and Black Friday, so make sure you take advantage. Just remember to use caution anytime you go online to download apps and files. I'm going to show you how to add Steam games to Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher, which would be perfect if you've been watching some of my 10 top games videos and you enjoy some of those games. I'm also going to show some tips and tricks and websites so that you can add the logos, the MP4 videos, the themes, and also the fade screens if you'd like to Hyperspin. Adding all of these items really jazzes up the presentation in Hyperspin. If you're ready for the in-depth video, sit back and enjoy. Step one, download and install Steam. If you already have Steam downloaded on your Arcade One, you can skip this step. But if you don't, go ahead to your Google search and type in Steam Store, and you should come up with a search that says Welcome to Steam, and the store.steampower.com, that's the correct link. Click on that. This will bring up the Steam homepage on the web browser, and in the upper right corner, there should be a green button that says Install Steam. Click on that. Then you want to click on this blue install Steam button and choose the location that you want the steamscript.exe file to go. This file you'll be throwing away afterwards, so it doesn't really matter where you place it. You can always click on this drop down arrow and show in folder, and then it'll take you directly to where you put it. Or if you want to put it on your desktop, that's simple too. So basically click on the steam setup.exe, and this is going to take you to the process of actually installing it on your Arcade One PC. Go ahead and take the time to read all this welcome to Steam setup information, and when you're done, click the next arrow. Then you can choose your language. I'm going to choose English. Click next. And this step's very important. This is where Steam's going to actually install at on your Arcade One PC. So you want to browse your destination folder on the C drive, program files, parentheses, x86 parentheses, and then Steam. Once you have the correct path, then go ahead and click the install button. It'll take a little bit, but it'll install Steam on the C drive on your Arcade One. I already have it installed, so I'm going to hit cancel. After Steam installs, then you can go ahead to that path, this PC, Windows 10 C drive, program files, parentheses, x86 parentheses, and then Steam. And in there, you're gonna have your steam.exe file. And that actually boots up Steam. I like to add Steam to my taskbar, so that way updates are easy to do on your desktop. So right click on steam.exe, go down to pin to my taskbar. This will add a Steam icon to your taskbar for easy access. You can also create a shortcut on your desktop if you'd like. So right click, go down to create shortcut it'll make it in this folder and then just drag it to your desktop or wherever you want it so this is another easy way to get into steam so you can download any of those 10 top games from my videos that you liked or do any updates step two game download and install i'm going to show the takeover as an example now that we have the Steam application on our Arcade One, we can go into Steam and actually start downloading games. So you want to click on the steam.exe and that'll bring up the actual Steam application. If this is your first time logging into Steam, you'll have to create a login name and password. So next up, we want to click on the Store tab and go into Featured and then we can type in whatever game we're looking for. So let's say we want to download the Halo Infinite free to play multiplayer mode. So you can type in Halo. Here comes Halo Infinite, it says free. We just click into that. And now it shows you all your information, your videos, your screenshots, um, whatever you need about the game. And then you go down to play Halo Infinite. You add it to your library. And now that says that you actually own it if you click that. So it's been added to your account and now is available in Steam. This hasn't downloaded the game yet. It's just saying, hey, you have access to it. If you actually want to download it, you have to click this play now button. And this brings up the game install screen. You always want to create a shortcut on your desktop. You want to see how much space the game's going to take up and how much disk space you have available. And then it also tells you how long the download's going to be and where the path is that you want to download the game. This is the path where your Steam games are going to download and install. So you want to make sure you put this in a place on a drive that has a lot of space on it. So I would recommend not putting it on the C drive and I would put it on a larger drive. I'll go over this a little bit more in a second here because I'm not going to download this Halo Infinite. I already have it on my Xbox Series X. So I'm going to use Takeover as an example instead. I'm going to type Take into the search menu. That pops up the Takeover game. It says it's already in my library. I'm going to click into it. 
The Steam game page has a lot of useful information, talks about the reviews, the release date, has videos, screenshots, the genre that it's under. So a lot of helpful information in case you want to know more about the game before you download it. An important thing before downloading is to make sure that your Arcade One PC has the specs that can run the game. So you want to scroll down on the page, check out the system requirements. If the specs of the game are too high, you'll be wasting a lot of time downloading it as well as hard drive space just to have a game that's not going to run properly. So this game looks good to go for me. So I'm going to scroll up and this title is already in my Steam library. So I'm going to hit play now. The pop-up menu will open and you want to make sure that you create desktop shortcut is checked. And then you want to see how much space is this game going to take up compared to how much space do you have available on whatever drive you're putting it. And then how long is this going to take to download? You can choose your location for install. Now, if you remember when we downloaded the Steam application itself, you wanted to put that on your C drive. However, for the games, we can put those on any drive. You want to make sure you have a drive with a lot of space. Antonio from our Facebook group said his drive was getting full, so he questioned if we could put it on a different drive. This is where you'll do that. You'll choose your location to install the game. So if you want to put it on the G drive, you select that. The E drive, the D drive, whatever external hard drives you have connected, you just find a drive that works for you. Now that you have your game install pass selected, click next. It'll start downloading the game. So now that it's downloading the game, if you want to track the progress, you sure can. So you can click on this Manage Downloads link right here. This will open up the main Steam window again, and it'll take you to the download section. This is showing that the takeover is currently downloading and is in progress. It'll show your percentage, the, your time, how many gigabytes it's going to take up, and all that fun stuff. Also, if you have other Steam games and they need updates, this is like a 3.3 gigabyte multiverse update that is scheduled for Monday. You can always reschedule those, or you can always cancel the update if you're not going to play that game anytime soon and you want to save the hard drive space. Or if there's a game that you no longer play, you can always uninstall the game as well. I'm going to speed this up real quick to finish up the download and we'll get moving on with the video. Here we go. Now that the game download and installation is complete, we can go ahead and play this game if we'd like. So in order to access your game's library, you're going to want to go up to library up here and then click on home. That'll bring you to the home page where all your games are. So over on the left side is where all my games are and then the most recent games show up in the middle here. So takeovers in the middle there or I can scroll down and click it on the left hand side. Once you're on the game that you want to play, you just hit that play button and it should boot up into Steam. All right, this game has a pop-up menu. Not all games will have these pop-up menus, but this is a launcher window where you could do your direct inputs if you want. Change those all here if you'd like to. Let's hit play and open this game up in Steam. Now keep in mind, this is not opening in Hyperspin or Rocket Launcher or Big Box or Launch Box or any other front end. This is just opening in Steam. If you don't care about hooking it up to your Hyperspin so it opens up in your Hyperspin wheel, then you're good to go. You can just play your Steam games right here, right now. But up next, I'm gonna show you how to get your Steam games working in both Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher. Step three, get games working in Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher. To get your Steam games working in Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher, there are a few important steps. I'm going to make notes of these, and we're going to come back to these later. First up, we're going to go to the shortcut that we created on our desktop for the takeover. Right-click on it, go down to Properties. It'll pop up a menu. We want the six-digit code at the end of the Steam slash Run Games ID slash the six-digit code. Make a note of that code. Another important item that we need to make a note about, go under Library, Home, scroll down to the game, the takeover, and then you want to right-click on that, go down to Manage, and then you want to Browse Local Files. That'll pop up the next thing that we need, which is the game.exe file. We want to locate the executable that's going to launch the game. This can sometimes be tricky. Sometimes there's multiple exe files. Sometimes it's hidden in a separate folder. So it's a little bit of trial and error, but you want to make sure you find the one that opens the game. For example, here there's two .exe files. The Unity Crash Handler 32.exe, that does not open the game. The Takeover.exe, that's the one that you're looking for. That's the one that's going to fire up the game. So we need to make a note of that one. Next, we have to add the game to the PC Games database. You find that under this PC, the Arcade D drive, Arcade, databases, and PC games. Before I mess with any of these files, I always like to make my own backup copy. So click on it, right click, copy, and paste. Now you have your backup. You can leave this as PC games copy, or I always like to label it BAK for backup. 
So let's say you would mess something up. Now you could just go to the file that you messed something up on, delete that file, go back to your backup file and rename it so it's just pcgames.xml. And now it's like you never even touched anything and didn't screw anything up. Now that I don't have a backup anymore, I'm gonna actually create another one. So copy and paste, rename it. I'm gonna name it BAK. I got my backup. But the one that we need to manipulate is the pcgames.xml. Double click that. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add the entry for the takeover. You can add it alphabetically or wherever you want. It really doesn't matter. It just needs to be complete. We're gonna highlight the entire entry. So from the game name, Fortnite index, all the way down to the closing tag, which is just the game. You have to have all the brackets. With everything highlighted, right click, copy, and click wherever you wanna place it. I'm gonna just place it right at the top here, and I'm gonna hit paste. But notice, two of the entries are combining into one line. You can't have that. So you have to click after that game, bracket and hit return. Now you have one copy of Fortnite complete and then you have a second copy of Fortnite that is complete starting with the game Fortnite and it closes with the closing tag with the game line. So that way you have two of the exact same entries. Next, I'm gonna open up Steam again, so that way we can get our information for our database very easily. You can always Google this, do a wiki on it, whatever's easiest for you, but I feel like this is pretty easy. So the game's called The Takeover, so then I wanna name the game in here, just in between the game name and the index, in between those quotation marks. I'm gonna call it The Takeover-Steam. It's very important how you name this, because you have to name it the same everywhere you're gonna put it. So right here, I'm also gonna name it The Takeover-Steam. As for the rest of the database entry, it's optional if you want to fill in the rest of these fields. I typically do just so it's complete. So the manufacturer is also over here on the Steam page. They have the developer and the publisher, whichever one you want to put. Just right click, copy, and paste over top of the black text, which in this case is Epic Games. So we're going to put Pelican 13. We're going to paste over top of that. And here you notice it returned down. You don't want that. So click before it, hit delete, make sure it's on the line up above. You don't want anything else to get deleted. So you don't want that bracket to get deleted. So if that bracket gets deleted, undo and go back. Next up, we're going to change the year. And over in the Steam page, it says 2019. So change just the black year to 2019. And the last thing we're going to change in the database is the genre. Over in Steam, it shows what type of genre the game is. It says beat em up. So I'm going to go over to the genre in the database. I'm going to type in beat em up and we're going to put beat em up. So now we have our complete new entry in the database for the takeover game. Now you want to make sure that whatever your first game was, that you copied, you still have that complete entry. So here I have the complete Fortnite entry and the complete new takeover entry. Go ahead and save and exit. You can go ahead and minimize Steam as well. We don't need that anymore. So a quick recap, we have Steam downloaded, we have the game that we want, in this case, the takeover downloaded to the hard drive that we want it, that hopefully has enough space for it. We have two important notes of information highlighted, which is the Steam ID number, which is the six digit code, and we have the game executable file, which is the takeover.exe file. And the most recent thing that we just did is we added the takeover, which is a Steam game, into the PC database. So now it'll show up in your rocket launcher and your hyperspin build. Next up, we're gonna open up Rocket Launcher and we're gonna make sure Rocket Launcher plays nice with Steam. In Rocket Launcher, you're gonna wanna type in PC games in the search bar and then scroll down and select PC games. You're gonna wanna make sure you're in the modules tab. So make sure you click on that tab in the PC games wheel after you type in PC games. So click on that, and then it should bring you here. If you're not on the modules tab, click the modules tab. Click this recycle button. That will refresh everything. Click on pclauncher.ahk file, and then you wanna click on the third one from the right. So one, two, three over, that's the edit system specific module settings. Click that and a pop-up menu will have all of your games that you have listed in your PC games wheel. Since you just added a brand new game, the takeover, you need to click on this green plus button. That'll bring up another pop-up menu. In this menu, we have our game entry from the PC games database, exactly how we had it, the takeover dash theme. So click on the takeover dash theme and now it adds it to your PC games list. So the game entry from the PC games database is now added to your official list. So now it's officially added to your rocket launcher and into your hyperspin build. So even though it's officially added and you could click on it, you're gonna get an error message because we haven't linked it to Steam. Now we need to get the Steam ID code. That is what we have over on the left-hand side on that note, that six digit code, copy that 
and paste that over here in the Steam ID section. So you should have your six digit code copied and pasted over here. Copying the Steam ID code is mandatory. Otherwise, Rocket Launcher and Steam won't know how to communicate with each other. However, this next step is optional. The default exit method is typically the escape key, which some games utilize the escape key as one of your commands. So you can run into issues. So I like to switch this to in-game. That way to exit the game, you actually have to do so by the menus. Now this does vary per game, but I think it's worthwhile. We're gonna be coming back into Rocket Launcher, but we can minimize it for right now. Feel free to delete the steam setup.exe file wherever you have that. You don't need that anymore. And if you copied it onto your desktop, you can delete that one as well. With that out of the way, it's finally time to use both of these notes. We need to find our steam IDs.ini file. You can locate that file by following this path. This PC, the arcade D drive, the arcade, the rocket launcher, the modules, and the PC launcher. So we're gonna find that Steam IDs.ini file and we're gonna make a backup copy of it. Just like we always do. That way if anything goes wrong, we can always revert back to the backup. So you can open that file up and scroll all the way down to the very bottom, copy the last three lines, which should be the last entry. You can right click, copy, and then do a return and your cursor should go down to the next available line and then you can right click, paste, and then now you'll have two copies of your last entry. You'll have your NBA 2K14 and then you'll have another NBA 2K14. We're gonna just go down line for line. So first over on the left, we're gonna copy our six digit Steam ID code and then we're gonna come back into the Steam IDs and we're gonna right click, paste, and now we'll have our six digit code there. Make sure you keep it formatted the same. So keep the brackets, just paste the code inside of those brackets. Next up, you wanna replace just the title of the last game. So if the last game was NBA 2K14, you wanna replace that with the takeover dash steam. And the last line is your EXE file. So we have that saved in the upper left hand corner. We wanna copy that, the entire name of it. So replace the NBA 2K14.exe with the space takeover.exe. So the entire entry should read the top line, your six digit Steam ID code. The middle line is the name of the game that you've been using. And the bottom line is the EXE file for the game. You can click the floppy disk in the upper corner to save it. And now you can finally exit out of all these. You no longer need these. The final step that you need to do is go to your window and go down this path. This PC, arcade D drive, arcade, rocket launcher, modules, and PC launcher and you want to locate the encryptpassword.exe file. Double click on the encryptpasswords.exe and then you'll want to type in your Steam username here and your Steam password. Now your username and your password should be saved and you should be able to boot up directly into Steam through Hyperspin. Again, to get to this, you go to this PC, Arcade D Drive, Arcade, Rocket Launcher, Modules, and PC Launcher. And then you want to double click on the encrypt passwords.exe file. And then you want to type in your Steam username and your Steam password and X out and you should be good to go. So now we officially have the takeover added to both Steam and Hyperspin. However, there's much more we can do. We can create profiles for our custom controls. We can also add artwork, videos, themes, and much more. So I'll go over those items next. Optional step four, custom joystick and button profiles with keyboard 2X input. Every PC slash Steam game, you map the controls differently. Some games are much easier to map on your joystick and buttons, which I prefer to do, whereas others are a little bit more complex, or you can't really do it and you have to play with a controller or a keyboard and mouse. Here are a couple examples to show you how you can map them inside the game, typically under the options. You go in there and then there should be something in there that says controls. So you can always try this method first, and if you get it mapped the way that you want it, great. Just use this. You don't even need to use the keyboard 2X input. Here's another example, Fight and Rage. This is a game I showcased on my 10 top games. Go ahead and scroll all the way down to settings. And then once you're in settings, there should be a control option to configure your controls. Here it makes you push either number one, two, or three on your keyboard. And then you just go through each of the controls. And you can map them to your joystick and buttons this way if you want. So this is definitely the simplest way to do your Xbox controllers or program your joystick and buttons if the particular game allows you to do so. However, some games only allow you to play one player on a keyboard. Even though you do have four players on your arcade control panel, all with keyboard keystrokes on your joystick and buttons, it still only allows you to play one player. So that can be troublesome, which is why I was excited when I found Carlos's video on the keyboard 2X input on his YouTube channel. It allows you to create individual profiles that allow you to trick Steam into thinking that that you're playing with four Xbox controllers instead of one keyboard that's actually split into those four players with your joystick and buttons. It's a very cool thing, but it is a little complex. Definitely watch this part a few times before trying it. See if it's up your alley. 
Now you can typically use the keyboard or Xbox controls for most modern PC games. However, I like to use keyboard 2X input when I can to make individual profiles that map the controls to my joystick and buttons on my arcade. So we're gonna go into this PC, arcade D drive, arcade, utilities, and keyboard 2X input. First thing you wanna do here is make a copy of your profiles folder. Just in case you mess anything up, you have a backup copy. So right click on profiles, copy, and then paste it here in this little white section and name it BAK or copy. Again, this is under this PC, arcade D drive, arcade, utilities, keyboard to X input. You wanna make a backup copy of your profiles folder. That way, if anything goes wrong, you have it. And then you can click into your profiles folder. And my understanding of what the keyboard to X input does is it basically tricks Steam into thinking that you're playing with an Xbox controller when really you're playing with the keyboard mapped to your joystick and buttons instead of an actual Xbox controller. So I'll explain all this a little bit more, but let's copy one of these entries. I'm gonna copy the doubledragon.ini file and we're gonna paste it here. So that way I have two copies of this and I'm gonna rename it takeover.ini. Just remember whatever you name it is important. So I'm just gonna name it takeover.ini, no spaces. So how you read this is the first command on the left is your keyboard input, then the equal sign, and then the first command on the right is your Xbox input. So how this is currently configured is for pad one, which is player one, the up, down, left, right on the left are all your arrow keys on your keyboard. The up, down, left, right on the right are all D-pad commands on your Xbox controller. The graphic on the top right of the X-Arcade control panel is actually provided by Carlos. This is how he maps all of the keyboard strokes to a joystick and buttons. So I'll reference this. Yours may be different based on how old or how new your unit is because he may have changed these, but this is the one that I'm gonna use for the example. So for this example, the D button on the keyboard is matched to the A button on the Xbox controller. The C button on the keyboard is matched to the B button on the Xbox controller. The A button on the keyboard is matched to the X button on the Xbox controller. The B button on the keyboard is matched to the Y button on the Xbox controller. And then depending on how many buttons you have for each of your players, that determines if you can map all of the bumpers and the triggers. So for example, he only has six buttons mapped to players one and two up above, even though there's eight buttons on the Xbox controller. So he has to make a decision, am I not gonna use the bumpers or not gonna use the triggers? I personally have eight buttons for players one and two and six buttons for players three and four. So I get to map all of the buttons for players one and two, and then I have to make that choice for players three and four. So if you want, you can make a master profile, copy and paste that one, rename it your new Steam game, and then go into the game, test it out. Does it work really well? Or is one of the buttons kind of in an odd spot that you want to remap it? Then you can come back here and remap it how you want. So for this example, I'm going to rename the D button on the keyboard to an A button. I'm not sure if it's case sensitive, but I always use capital letters. That was just to show you how you rename the buttons. I'm going to name it back because otherwise I would have duplicate A buttons on the keyboard. So the Xbox controller has two thumbsticks and a D-pad. If the Xbox game or the PC game actually utilizes all of those, I typically don't map it onto my joystick and buttons. I just use an Xbox controller to play those types of games, such as first person shooters. But if it only uses the D-pad or one thumbstick, I'll absolutely map it to my joystick and buttons every time. So for example, fighters typically use your left thumbstick. So I'm gonna show you how to map that. Basically it's the exact same thing on the right hand side, instead of up, down, left, right, you just add an L in front of it. So it's L up, L down, L left, L right. That's your left thumbstick, up, down, left, right. If you wanna use the right thumbstick, then obviously you'd put an R in front of it. So R up, R down, R left, R right. I did have to figure out quite a few of these commands because all of these weren't in one of the profiles. So I had to Google and figure out some of these. Like for example, here's like the number pad numbers down here. You also have your other numbers. And in front of them, you had to put a D in order for it to recognize. And those are your top row numbers. And then the number pad ones down at the bottom, those are if you have a side number pad and then you can input those. The commands can get a little confusing if you're utilizing absolutely every key on the keyboard. So it depends on how many players you have, how many buttons you have, if you're using an iPad, etc. Like for example, the space bar, the home button, the return button, the multiply button, those have to be spelled out a certain way. Otherwise the keyboard to X input doesn't know how to recognize it and it won't know how to translate the keyboard stroke into an Xbox controller stroke and vice versa. Let me know if you have any issues and I'll try to help. So now back in our profiles folder, we have our new takeover.ini that we just created. Make note of the name of it, we'll need that in a second. Now if you open it up, we'll see we only have the two players. If this was a four player game, we could copy one of the pads 
paste it, and then remap it based on the buttons that we have for players three and four. So we can close out of that once we know it's saved by hitting that floppy disk. And now we'll double check that we still have the double dragon in any and that we didn't save over that. Now go back and rocket launcher. Make sure you're in the PC games under the modules tab. Hit that green refresh arrow if you need to. Make sure you're clicking on the PC launcher.ahk and then hit the third icon from the right. So in rocket launcher, I'm going to show you one of Carlos's examples of how he utilized the profiles under double dragon neon, which we just made a copy of that profile. And you want to click on the pre post launch tab. And this is the tab where rocket launcher will recognize that you have a profile and you want it to activate and deactivate. In the post launch line, we're going to have it activate the keyboard 2x input app and then in the post exit we're going to have it deactivate that program and then in the post launch parameters we're going to have it activate the actual profile that we want it to so i'm going to copy that bottom line because that's important and then i'm going to scroll through the list or just type in the name of the game that i'm looking for in this case the takeover dash steam then i want to go on the pre post launch go down to the post launch parameters and paste in that line that i told you to copy from double dragon neon so it should read D drive slash arcade slash utility slash keyboard to X input slash profiles slash double dragon dot any. However, we don't want it to load the double dragon dot any file. We want it to load the takeover any file that we created. So we want to locate that profile again under this PC, arcade D drive, arcade, utilities, keyboard to X input profiles. Find your takeover dot any file and copy that. Now go back into Rocket Launcher and under the post launch parameters, that last section that says double dragon dot any, you can paste your takeover any there. The new parameters should read D colon backslash arcade, backslash utilities, backslash keyboard 2x input, backslash profiles, backslash takeover dot any. Next up, go up to your post launch, hit the magnifying glass, and under this PC, arcade D drive, arcade, utilities, keyboard 2x input, you want to locate the file that says keyboard 2x input GUI.exe. You can click on that to highlight it and then go click open. Once you start up takeover in your hyperspin build, this will post launch the keyboard 2x input app, which will allow our custom profile to load. Next up, we want this app to close when we exit out of the takeover. So we have to go to the post exit and hit the magnifying glass. And now we have to find the application that'll quit out of our profile when we close out a takeover. So that way the profile is no longer active. So we need to go find this path under this PC, arcade D drive, arcade, utilities, keyboard 2x input. And then you want to find the file that says close keyboard 2x input GUI.exe. Then you can go ahead and hit open and you're back into Rocket Launcher. And you should be good to go. So if you go under application and you make sure that you're under the takeover dash Steam, that's your game. You have your Steam ID number put in there. So Steam's going to recognize it. And then you go under your pre and post launch and make sure that you have your links to activate and deactivate the app. And then at the bottom, your post launch parameter, that'll take you to your any profile and make sure that's active. And if you change your exit method, you can double check that as well. And then you're good to go. Takeover is now ready to play in Hyperspin. You can boot it up from Steam and you should be able to play it with your joystick and buttons. And when you quit out of the game, it'll deactivate the controls for you. Now, I know that was a lot to take in and all the steps are important. So make sure you rewatch the video a couple times. Make sure you understand it before you attempt it. But once you get the hang of it and you do a few of these, it's actually not that hard and it is very simple. Now, I have had a lot of luck with this keyboard 2x input for a lot of the PC games and especially the 10 top games that I recommended. I have come across a couple games that had drifting with the joystick where my character would keep running a certain direction. Not sure if I did something wrong, if the game just doesn't really handle it well, or if there was something running in the background that was causing that. But beware, it's not perfect, but it does work really well most of the time. Optional, step five, adding themes, logos, videos, and fade screens to hyperspin. So now that you got your game working in Hyperspin, you might as well make it look pretty and add some logos, videos, themes, and fade screens if you can. So one of my go-to sites for this is hyperspin-fe.com. It's free to use and it's free to sign up. And I would highly encourage you to sign up because otherwise it limits your downloads and they take a long time in between downloads. So I would strongly encourage you to sign up. This site has a great community of people that are very creative and do some awesome themes. And sometimes you can even find the logos and the videos here as well. So it's a very helpful resource. It can be a little touchy in the search engine. So you have to make sure you know exactly what you're searching for. I'm going to type in takeover and we're going to see what comes up. 
So we hit return and then we can scroll down and we can see if there's any search results. It looks like there's five results, including two PC themes for takeover. So let's scroll back up and look at these two themes. The display can vary. Sometimes the themes are set to 4.3. Those are older themes and the newer ones are 16.9, but they both work. They just might be stretched and not as high resolution. So I'm gonna just click on the top one first and we can see what this theme looks like. All right, that looks pretty good. And this one also has a logo, and it says the aspect ratio at the bottom is 16.9. Since it has a logo, you can right click and you can actually save image as and download that if you want. You wanna make sure all of these items that we're gonna be searching for are named the exact same thing that you named this game in the database. So we called it the takeover dash theme. So that's what we have to call this PNG file, the takeover dash theme. So copy and paste that in the file name and then locate where you're gonna place this under this PC, arcade D drive, arcade, media, PC games, images, and wheel. That's where the takeover dash theme PNG needs to go. I'm gonna put BAK on mine because I actually like the logos with a transparency where there's no background, whereas this one looks more like an emblem or an icon and it has a background. So once you're done with that, save it, and now we have our first logo. I'm gonna go check the other takeover entry and see if there's a logo in there as well. Okay, so here's the other entry, and this one also has a theme, and this one's a different theme than the previous one. So you can pick whichever one, or you can download them both if you want. And now I'm gonna click on that other image. Looks like it's a logo. It has a background, but I'm gonna download it anyway. So save image as, and then go over to your database. Make sure you have the file name, the takeover dash theme. You can copy that, right click on that, copy, and then go over here and paste. And now you have the exact same thing, except I'm gonna call this backup number two because I'm not gonna utilize it right now, but I'm gonna download it just so I have it in case I ever wanna switch to it. So I'm gonna exit out of here and I'm gonna go back to the first theme and I'm gonna download that theme first, show you what that's all about. So we're inside here and that's the theme and that's what it looks like. And over here on the right, you can click this download this file button. And now I could download the PNG from here if I wanted to, but I already downloaded it. So I'm gonna download the zip file. It shows the name of the file and how large it is but remember, we want to have the exact name from our database. So this is a different name. So when I click to download this, so I have to change the name to match our database. Otherwise, Rocket Launcher and Hyperspin, they're not going to recognize this and the theme won't load properly. So you want to place this theme inside this PC, Arcade D Drive, Arcade, Media, PC Games, and Themes. Confirm the location, confirm the name of the zip file, and you should be good to go. Save it and it will download for you in the proper place. So now we're gonna jump back to that other theme because that's actually a RAR file instead of a zip file. Rocket Launcher and Hyperspin need the zip files in order to read them properly, but the downloads that are RAR files on the site typically have additional items, including videos, so they are worth looking into. So I'm gonna download this RAR file by Ghost Loss, and I'm gonna just download it to my desktop because I am gonna have to unrar it, which is basically uncompressing it. So I'm gonna navigate to my desktop just so I have a place that I can see where it's at and unzip it. If you wanna do it on one of your drives, that's fine too. The RAR files typically take longer to download than the zip files do, and you can only download one thing at a time, so you do have to wait. So I sped this up a little bit, and our file's downloaded on our desktop. So I'm gonna right click on it, go up to WinRAR, and then I'm gonna scroll down to the extract to and whatever the file name is of the file. This will extract the file and put it into a new folder on your desktop. Locate the folder, double click on it, open it up, and you'll see there's multiple items inside here, including an MP4, a PNG, and a zip file. The PNG is gonna be your logo that you already downloaded. The MP4 is gonna be your video, which is great. And then the zip, that's gonna have all your artwork and everything for your theme. So this is awesome. So if you would've went here first and downloaded this RAR file, you would have your logo, your video, and your theme. So you're good to go. I'm gonna quick rename my theme that I currently have in there to backup, so that way I can activate this theme as my main theme. Just make sure you have the same naming convention we've been using from the database, the takeover dash theme. Make sure you're copying it into the correct place, this PC, arcade D drive, arcade, media, PC games, themes, and you're good to go with the theme. And here's a quick preview of the theme, just so you can see it in action. I'll put a link in the description below for the hyperspin-fe.com site. It's a really good resource. So if you search the hyperspin-fe.com site and you couldn't find the logo that you're looking for, you can always do a Google search. I typically like the transparent backgrounds, so I type in the name of the game and logo PNG. A PNG will typically have your transparent backgrounds. So type in the takeover logo PNG, and that should give us some good results, especially if the game's popular. 
Then click on this images button. Your mileage will vary. A lot of these takeovers are not the game. They're more wrestling events. The one we want here is in the upper left hand corner. You can scroll down, see if there's other versions of it that you like better, but this is the one we want. So you wanna click on the image and then you wanna right click on the image and go down to open image and new tab. This will open it as big as it can be. Sometimes you can even enlarge it more. Then you wanna right click again and save image as. The path for the images is this PC, arcade D drive, arcade, media, PC games, images, wheel. That's where you'll want to be putting these. And you also want to remember the file name has to be the exact same thing in our database that we've been utilizing. If you know it by heart, you can just type it in. If you're unsure, then pop up the database and go to your takeover entry. And the first line, the takeover dash steam, that's what you want to right click and copy. And then you want to go over to your save as window that you're currently in with the logo and you want to right click and paste. So now it says the takeover dash steam dot PNG. And like I said, PNG is what you want for your logo. And that'll download in the correct location. I have a couple backups, but I like the transparent ones the best. If you couldn't find the video that you're looking for in hyperspin-fe.com, another site that I'd recommend is called emumovies.com. And that's emumovies.com. There's a ton of great video game content on this site. Mainly the videos that they have are older videos for like Nintendo games and Sega Genesis games. They're called Snaps. So you may not find the newer PC games on here, but it's worth a shot checking it out just in case. All of the newer PC games have trailers on Steam and on YouTube. However, those file formats aren't usually MP4 file formats. And Hyperspin likes to have MP4 file formats. So if you do get a different file format, you will have to figure out a way to convert it to an MP4 file format in order for it to work. Another piece of art that you can add to each of the games if you'd like is called the fade screen. So when you're in hyperspin and you click on your game, let's use the takeover as an example. You click on takeover and it boots up into Steam. You're gonna actually see a wallpaper in the background while it's loading. And I'm gonna show you how you can find some of those wallpapers. So you can just go to your Google search and type in the takeover wallpaper and click on the images and a whole bunch of different ones will pop up. There are a lot of wallpaper stores online that you can actually download them from there directly, or you can just find one that you like. Check the resolution size, make sure it's a good quality, right click, open image in a new window. Now you can see the quality of it. This looks like a great image, looks like official artwork from the game. You can right click, save image as, find the path location. This one's in a little different spot. It's under this PC, arcade D drive, arcade. Now it's under rocket launcher, media, fade, PC games, and then you want to create a folder called the takeover dash steam within that PC games folder. So for every game that you want to have a fade screen for in your PC games, you need to create your own file with the exact same name that you have in the database for that game. Now that you have your folder created, you're ready to rename the file name. This is different from the art and the video and the theme. You actually have to name it layer space one. The takeover dash steam name is actually the name of the folder, whereas the files inside the folder all need to be named with layer. So layer space one, layer space one dash one, layer space one dash two, etc. You can have multiple wallpapers, multiple fade screens in there, and it'll rotate every time you load up the game. However, they have to be named correctly, otherwise they're not going to show up. Here's that other theme, and I'm gonna show you what the fade screen is. So we're gonna boot into it, and this is the fade screen in the background that now loading. We just downloaded that, and this is what it looks like. Pretty cool, and then it boots into the game, and for this particular game, it has a little pop-up menu that you have to click through first. Problem. PCGames.xml is invalid. So one common problem you can have is if you make an error in your database file when you're copying and pasting your entries and you're typing in all your dates and everything, if you do something wrong, the pcgames.xml file will become invalid. So you either have to go back and fix the problem or else we made that backup copy and you can revert back to that in case you have no idea what's wrong. So for this example, I'm gonna show you what happens if you accidentally delete an extra character, such as the closing bracket at the end of the entry. I'm gonna delete this right here. So now that there's no closing bracket, this is an invalid entry and it will not open correctly. So I'm gonna save this, and next time I boot up Hyperspin and go into the PC games wheel, it won't even let me go into the PC games wheel at all because the database is wrong. So here we go. So I'm clicking into the PC games wheel, and instead of going in and showing me all the games, it just says PC games.xml is invalid. So right there, you should know that your database is corrupt. You need to go back and figure out what the last thing you did and try to fix it.
That's why I'd recommend just doing one game at a time, testing it before you do another one. If all of a sudden you had five, six, seven games and you have that error, you don't know exactly what the problem is. So fortunately for me, I know exactly what the issue is. I'm missing a closing bracket on the game. So I'm just gonna copy a good entry and then paste it over top of my bad one and then that should solve the problem. I'm gonna save it and then we should be good to go. I'm gonna go into hyperspin, go into the PC games wheel and since the takeover theme loads, that means the game works and that means the problem solved. Problem, naming conventions don't match. Another problem that can arise is if the name of the game in the database does not match up to the name of the logo, the video, the theme, or the fade screen. So right here, I'm just gonna add the number two after Steam, so that way the database name has a two after the end of it, but none of my other artwork or videos have that, so they're not gonna match up. So I'm in hyperspin in the PC games wheel and I'm on the takeover page. This should be the takeover theme that we downloaded, but it's not. It's just a blank video. Nothing's loading. The screen's not loading. The logo's not loading. I try to click into the game. The fade screen's not loading. Nothing's working. And the reason for this is because the naming conventions don't match up. Typically your database entry would be correct and you might have misnamed one of your videos or your theme or your logo. But in this example, the database entry was wrong. And now I corrected it and everything should be lined up and it should work this time. So back in PC games, we're gonna click in and now we get the takeover theme just like we wanted it. And now we're gonna click in and see if the fade works. Yep, the fade works as well because the fade name matches the database name. Occasionally I'll have an error that pops up on the screen that'll back me out and then I'll load back in a second time and the error won't pop up and it'll boot into the game just fine. So maybe try it twice, see if it works. If it doesn't, then do some troubleshooting. And one last error that sometimes happens is for some reason I'm not connected to Steam. So I actually have to go to my desktop and open the Steam app manually and then come into Hyperspin and boot up the game and it seems to work. Bonus, the takeover gameplay. Since we put in all this work and effort to get the takeover running out of Steam in our Hyperspin build on our Arcade One, let's see if it actually works. I'm gonna see if the profiles load. If they do, when it boots up, you'll hear a couple chimes. The theme and video are working, as is the logo. And now, here's the fade. It's working as well. Those are the two chimes indicating that my profile loaded for players one and two. Some games will boot up directly into the game in Steam. This one has a launcher, so you have to check your settings and click the play button in order to actually play the game. Sometimes it's hard to find your cursor. A little tip to find your mouse cursor easily is to hit the control button. That makes that ring appear and makes it easy to find where your cursor's at. Now you can double check your settings and if everything looks good, hit that play button and it'll boot up the game in Steam. If it doesn't boot up Steam, you might have to go to your desktop and activate Steam first and then come into Hyperspin and do this. So we get the nice little introduction cutscene to the game, and now we're on the main menu. There are a few different modes in the takeover. You have your arcade, your challenge, and your survival, along with practice. And there are three different characters to select from. We're gonna play co-op to test out that co-op profile that we created in the Keyboard 2X input. It looks like there's a few unlockables as well. Here are all the stages. We're gonna start on the first one, obviously, and we're gonna boot up the story.
babe. What's wrong? Ethan, someone's taken Vanessa. Is there blood? No, not that I can see. But there was a struggle. Cops all over my precinct have been getting death threats. It has to be whoever's behind this new crime wave. We took her in when no one else would. She's our daughter, Ethan. Damn right she is. Meet me in the alley on 5th and Marcellus. I know where we might get some answers. Should I get in touch with Connor? Do you need to ask? He's always ready for a fight. We're going to get her back, Megan. I swear it. I know we will. See you there. So that's a nice little opening to the game. It shows all of our characters, what they're up to, and the stylish art style. I really like it. I wish there was a little bit more of this, and I wish there were some more boss fights in this game, but the game definitely has really good graphics, and it has some fun combat. It's a beat-em-up brawler, similar to Final Fight or Streets of Rage. As you can tell, they definitely went all out in the graphic department. It looks amazing. The rain looks great, the reflections are awesome, the explosions, the lightning, very cool stuff. Each of your characters has three lives. You have your normal meter, and then you have a super meter, and then you can also fill up that rage meter in the center of the screen. And you can pick up weapons and pick up ammunition for the weapons as well. The combat's pretty standard for these beat em up brawler games. They're similar, like I said, to Final Fight, Streets of Rage. Besides the things that I mentioned earlier, you have your standard punch kicks, grabs, throws, jump attacks, all of that's pretty standard. This game's nothing super special, but what I like about it is it's a modern PC game that you can play on your home arcade with your joystick and buttons with multiple people. And it's very pretty to look at as well. I think you get the gist of it. I'm just gonna skip ahead a little bit to show you a little bit more of the game, and then we'll end this video. Here we're in an indoor location. It's an arcade slash bar. Looks really great. I'm gonna show a little bit of the gun gameplay. It's kind of like Resident Evil, where one button actually draws your weapon, and then another button's used to shoot. It is a little different than most beat em up brawlers, how the gun's utilized, so it does take a little bit getting used to, but it's really effective. You just need to line up your shot and fire. And the last thing before we go, I'm gonna show the rage attack with our meter filled, and we're gonna unleash hell. And that completes the Arcade One new update for how to add Steam games into Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher. What did you think? I know that was a lot of information, but I wanted to be as detailed as possible. I also broke this down into chapters in the description down below, so that way in the future you can bookmark this video, and if a new game comes out and you kind of forget some of the steps, you can just jump to whatever chapter you need to. And if you like the video, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and ring that notification bell because I plan on having a lot more videos in the future. I'm going to include some of the links down below to get to some of those sites that I talked about in the video, and I also have my PayPal link down there, so if you are in a financial situation where you can donate to the channel to help me create additional content in the future, you can go ahead and click on that in the description down below as well. Thank you for all of your support, I really appreciate it, and we're in the end game now.